Like, yeah. how, do, how do we get started with these data tiers? I know data tiers are kind of like one piece of the whole ILM picture, but I do think it's a great place where people who may be looking to implement this for the first time or maybe looking to go to their boss and say, hey, look, this is a thing that could give us some, you know, some cost benefits some performance benefits. They're going to want to be able to, to flip a switch and, and show how, how easy it is. So I guess the first question is, is it that easy to just flip a switch on data tiers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. So shameless plug, I think Josh and I and Faith, we had a, it was a meetup um, some months ago. And Josh did a great job of showing what the, um, if you have an existing Elasticsearch cluster, how you're to introduce ILM. So I think that's that's a great um, that's a great video to kind of go back and watch. You might want to skip yeah. for the first couple of minutes because I think we kind of do introduction about what is Elastic and be great if you don't need that. But um, but even since the our when we had this talk, um, you know when Josh and I did this. Um, you know, there's a lot of advancements, like in searchable snapshots, for example. It's not something that him and I were able to, to talk about at the time. But in that time, once we had that, I mean, we have all this. So, I mean, we know the pace of innovation at Elastic uh, is, is crazy. Uh, even internally as customers, we're, or internally as employees, we're like, okay, what do we release? Well, that's crazy. Like, how does that change the, the conversation of data management? Mm -hmm. um, but I do want to show, um, you know, this is inside our Elastic Cloud, but you have the same experience if you're um, deploying Elasticsearch in Kibana. Um, let me go ahead and go back to my screen here. And let me know if you can see this. You're all good. Perfect. Um, and, and so what I'm looking at is just kind of like the home screen for, for Kibana. Um, this is, happens to be, um, I have a, a deployed Kibana. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's Kibana on, on our uh, Elastic Cloud. But again, you, you'll have a very good, you know, uh, similar experience um, within a managed your self-managed Kibana. But if I come over here um, to kind of our uh, our menu items on the uh, upper left-hand corner, you'll see something towards the bottom that's called um, stack management. So Kibana is not only used for, um, is the window into your data to be able to visualize and explore and and um, yeah and, and, and analyze that data, but it's also for, for stack management. Now, all of this can easily be completed as well through APIs and through the, the dev console. Which you know, I think um, Josh definitely goes into. But to the simplicity side of to getting started, I think it'd be great just to kind of go through Kibana and look and look through it. But down here, you'll see um, where we have uh, index lifecycle policies. So if I go into that under data, then we can start creating our policy. Um, and we, we, there's also some policies that we put in here. That's kind of a you know a, a basic you know our system industry system indices and how we we manage and create that. But if I create a new policy. Uh, I'm going to call it, you know, let's say um, data management. And then maybe I'll say it's test because I'll know to delete it later. Um, but if we kind of look through this, this is a, a great UI that the Elasticsearch and Kibana UI team worked on um, that kind of walks through each of these phases um, and gives you some of these options. For example, in the hot phase, um, you know, you, we have some different options. Like, do you want to roll over your data from the current index? And then, you know, there's a rollover where it takes it from one of your hot nodes and then roll it over into into a, a lower tier or lower phase index, and and then do we want to do let's call it a force merge, um, and you know uh, Jay, do you want to to briefly talk about like what a force merge and a, and a shrink are? Um, let's oh. let's let's hit it really quick. <laughs> we can. Sure. Oh yes, yes, on the time. Oh, you're asking me to do it. I just... Oh no, no. I, I said I said Jay. I meant Josh. <laughs> oh, hey, <sorry>. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, I'm I am your host. I'm here to smile and um, make sure chat doesn't explode. Smile and wave. Smile and wave. No, I'm sorry, yeah. Josh. Yeah. So force merge, really quick. Uh, the quick overview of it is as you're writing. Uh, events to, to your disk, it's it's almost like a fragmentation. You just write it to disk as quickly as possible. So you're gonna end up with all these events all over all of your disk in, in segments. What this what a force merge does is it takes all of these segments and shrinks them down into one larger segment. And it, it just keeps getting shrink it just keeps getting smaller and smaller number of segments, larger segments though. So you uh, so you end up with one large segment at the end. It's the most performant. Yeah, I almost think about it, this might age me a little bit when you had um, 
uh, spinning disks. It was almost like a defrag, right? When you had exactly. to re uh, run a, a disk management tool under in Windows. Yeah, um, exactly. I use Linux now, so don't don't yeah. judge. But um, but yeah, I mean, yeah. So you're kind of reducing the amount of um, uh, you know um, uh, segments that you have. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and then and then shrink obviously is also if you have. Um, we talked about primaries and, and replica shards, you know, they're used to be searched. Mm -hmm. And if you could also shrink on how many of those shards that you need, yeah. um, you know, if you have the primary, you can, you can uh, tell how many shards uh, Elasticsearch cluster has, you could say, you know, the defaults, yeah. one primary, one replica, mm -hmm. but let's say you have a use case for having a larger amount of, of primary shards, or you want to have, you know, um, some extra redundancy. So you'll add a, a extra replica shards. Well, mm -hmm. having more shards will give you the ability to have more, you know, threads working on a search. And of course, you can have too much shards that would negatively impact you. But a shrink is just the ability to take some of those that sharding that you had and just reduce it down and shrink that down. So I think that I think priority also is kind of overlooked. Also, that's a really good one. If you uh, have important oh, data if you, if you have an, an issue and you have an important data it you can set a higher priority on your important data so it's recovered earlier in, in the recovery process so you have some really important data you want it to recover first you can see it at first and you set your uh, non or less important data lower down so it's not restored or recovered as as quickly so, yeah i see this being something along the lines of you know again if you're if you're just constantly pulling in data and pulling in data and pulling in data um recovering that recently pulled in data may or may not be the most important thing. There may be like some importance on historical data and making sure that that's preserved. Whereas the, you know, the newest data could probably just be re-imported or, you know, you could say error has occurred. Please try again. Whereas, you know, data that you've kept for three decades, mm -hmm. you, it, it may be, you may need that data faster and right. to make sure that, you know, that data is, yeah, I guess sturdier. Yeah, again, it it it's all based on your what's important to you. So just just another setting that we provide. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so by looking at the advanced settings here, you know, right now we're with the only thing that's configured is the hot phase, and then and then you know we're going to keep data in this phase forever until you define you know when you want to delete it, right? But what we're going to do is we're going to say yeah we'll want to have searchable snapshots. So that's going to be where we're using that that functionality, that license to also use the frozen tier. Um, but when we come down to, you know, we can configure, for example, the warm phase. So, you know, move this into this phase when the date uh, the data has either reached, for example, um, days, hours, minutes, and seconds old. So, you know, for example, we want to say when the data reaches, you know, um, actually, if we can come to the top, uh, no, sorry, on the warm, we say we want to have this into, let's say, seven days. So as soon as the, the data is there in, in seven days, then it'll move from hot and in, then into warm. Um, and then the warm phase, you can also have, um, you know, how many replicas allocation. There's some other um, priorities here you can set. And of course, if you want to set cold, same thing, you can use searchable snapshots. Um, and then going into the advanced settings on um, data allocation. Um, and of course, finally to the frozen phase on, you know, when this can move in. But as we're configuring this, you can actually see, for example, um, at the very top, you know, where where you at on how much data you have in each phase. And if we increase or decrease that, that kind of sets that up. Um, one other item I'll say is, let's say after, you know, uh, we'll say we don't want anything that's uh, a cold or warm. We want to go from straight from hot, uh, you know, um, the hot phase directly straight into the, the frozen phase. You, you certainly can do that. Um, but yeah, so we want to move this data, let's say, um, once it reaches seven days again, and then we can kind of configure to, to, to when, when do we want to delete this phase? So we actually click the delete this thing and say, hey, I want to delete this data after it's it's reached, um, you know, let's say um, five years, for example. Um, uh, do I have years? No, I have days. I think they're going to add that on later. So let's do, yeah, 365. So anytime after a year, then it'll automatically delete, and that'll be that final phase. Let's say if you don't want to keep everything. And we can save that policy. And there, there's, I know we we kind of quickly running out of time, so that's why I'm 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 kind of you know moving quickly. But it really gives you the flexibility in how you can define these policies and and then move those that you know there. And the search snapshot is just only going to that's the license feature. That's going to be it gives you the ability to do the um, you know half the 
uh, in cold have the, pri the primary shards on local storage and replica shards on S3, or just be able to search on S3 directly. But again, for self-managed, you might still have that cold tier being the lowest of your hardware capabilities, and that kind of offsets that, that TCO piece. So something else to really mention also is all of our agents have policies with them. So when you do a proper setup with it, it these policies will go into your Kibana Island policies. So you can go in there and take a look and, and see how we set them up. And it gives you a good uh, beginning to see see how they're set. So if you're running metric beats, file beats, you do the setup, it imports it for you. So yeah. And so if we go into metrics itself, you know, and this is kind of based off of our experience and what we've seen our users and customers doing. So we have metrics, for example, as in the hot phase, you can go in and, and modify that. So so we, we, we kind of come up with a template. You know, we're, we're more, I don't know if prescriptive is the right word, but we're definitely more opinionated on how, on how those phases are. Mm -hmm. But it's just a, a, a guidance. You could easily go in and change those policies as you're, as you're configuring that. Yeah. Very cool. Well, it, it sounds like, you know, as I said, you click a few buttons and you're off to the races. I'm not going to say click blindly, uh, give it some thought, make sure uh, you know what's happening, especially when you hit that delete button. But uh, Josh, George, thank you so much for uh, giving us a good, you know, quick lunch time lesson. And uh, are y'all hanging out in the, uh, the, you know, community forums as well? Is that how if people have questions they can get in touch with you? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead, Josh. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. Yeah. I was just say community forms is one of the best places to get a hold of us. So.